Well, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Photoshop User TV. I am Pete Collins, one of the Photoshop guys here at Kelby One. And I've got my infamous, infamous partner, infamous. Corey Barker here. Yes. How you doing, I feel Corey? like we haven't left. I feel <laughs> like we don't go anywhere. We're, we just sit right here. They staple us to the chair and say we, go. We're not allowed to leave once, we're, once the show is happening. So We are two of the Photoshop guys here at Kelby One. They are the great sponsors of this magazine that Corey's going to hold up, style it, profile it. Photoshop User Magazine, where you can get all kinds of great tips, tricks, Photoshop information, and more. Make sure you check it out. Check out kelbyone.com to find out more information. And hey, speaking of more information, Corey, drop some knowledge on us right here, right now. I what think you got I shall. And this episode, we are talking about brushes. Brushes in Photoshop are indeed one of the most powerful aspects of it. I am still discovering new stuff all the time. I know Pete is as well. We are huge lovers of the brush engine inside Photoshop. And I just wanted to talk about how you quickly go about defining your own custom brush. It's really easier than it sounds. <clears throat> Now, one of the things um, I often will tell people is that when you're looking for images to make brushes out of, especially when it's a special effect type thing, like I've got here these different types of spats, just these ink spatters here. Now, when you're doing a internet search, let's say, when you're doing stock images or something like that, look for images that are really kind of put into a collection like this. You know, you could probably find you know, like one of these spatters alone as a, a, a lone stock image. but when you find a collection like this, you're still paying for one stock image, but you're getting, look how many. I mean, there's 16 of them here. So, you want to pay for one or 16? Right. You know, so, they, and, and this is just a whole bunch of things. I actually have fire images that will have, I have several different types of fire elements and different behaviors of fire all in the same image, which counts as one stock image, but I use them continuously because it's so many different um, things about it. Well, and stock yeah. photographers have figured that out too. Mm -hmm. The guys go, hey, I'm going to give them more bang for their buck, mm -hmm. so I'm going to put some collections together. Precisely. Now, the great thing about an image like this is that it's already black and white. It's pretty much ready and to quickly and easily make a brush out of, because when um, Photoshop defines a brush, it looks at the darkest areas of your, the, uh, either the whole image or the area you have selected. Now, in this case, what I'm going to do is just jump right down. I'm going to grab my lasso tool here and just jump down to this uh, spatter right here. I like this one down here in the bottom left corner, and just draw a selection around that. Now. <clears throat> I do not need to isolate the selection specifically to the spatter itself because Photoshop is going to ignore the white background. It's going to make that transparent. Now, all you got to do is go to the edit menu and go down here to define brush preset. And it will ask if you want to name it. We'll just give it whatever name. I never have time to do you name your brushes. I never name my brushes. No. You know, this is, it's always good practice to try and name your layers and things that you create in Photoshop, but we never do. Well, for one of the reasons with the brushes is because <coughs> you're never really seeing the name of it. I'm mm -hmm. just looking for how it looks and its characteristics, so I'm not you know, exactly. that so you, concerned about naming it. You're just concerned about seeing that icon in there. Right. Now, when I just define a brush, and it's going to show up here in my brush menu, which will be at the very bottom. Hey, down. can I interrupt you? What's with, I, I meant to ask you this before, you've got all those lettering in there, fur, smoke, and stuff like that. That is actually... Is that how you separate them out? No, well, it's not how I separate them out. It's actually a collection of brushes I got from someone else. Ah, okay, okay, I got you. Ooh, sorry. My <laughs> secret stash has uh -huh. been revealed, apparently. Um, so my brush menu is like acting crazy here, so I'm actually going to locate it inside my panel here. Now, just while I'm searching for this, I just want to point out, when it comes to brushes, when you define a brush, there's two different ways you can save a brush in Photoshop. And it's you can save a brush as a brush tip or a tool preset. Now, tool presets basically um, allow you to save whatever behavior modifications you've made to the brush, whether you've set it to, spat, to scatter or change the angle as you brush, or even transparency settings like uh, pin pressure or something like that. It'll retain all that information. A brush alone is just a tip. It's just You just go in there and you modify it. Um, Beforehand, you can even modify a tool preset once it's defined. So, which are located, yes, right up here. It's the very first. If you ever wonder where that very first icon is in your options bar when you have the brush tool selected, there it is. And there are a collection of tool presets built in to Photoshop right here, as you can see. So, you can define your own, and of course, use any of these. You can even take the preset ones that you've already got, modify them, and then resave them as new tool presets if you like. So, but I have an inkling that. Pete's going to expand on that a little bit later. 
Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to talk about saving your brushes and stuff like that, but I use the tool presets all the time, especially cuz I like to draw and sketch. So I've created some certain pencils and other things that I want to use over and over again and I already know kind of the sizes of what I want and if they're going to have black or they're going to have gray or something like that. So I've already made those up and created tool presets for them that I go to all the time. As soon as I start to draw, I just go up to that corner, bam, hit that tool preset, and I drop right down and grab the one I have. It's already loaded with the color, the spacing, everything I want right there. Whereas if I grabbed a brush, I would literally come up, hit the brush, and then I have to go in and tweak all the settings, grab the color, spacing, all that stuff before I could, I could use it. So know the difference. It's really powerful to use tool presets, but we tend to ignore it because it's tucked over in the corner. Mm. Definitely give it a, uh, a check out, and uh, it may speed up your process. So, All right. um, how was that for vamping while you, uh, yeah, you find so your brush? Yeah, so located my brush. I'm actually going to create a new blank layer. Now, if I just increase my brush size here, you can see there is my outline of the brush I defined. I'm painting with white here, and you can just see that I can just add this kind of special effect to it. But I'm going to change the blend mode of this layer to soft light, and just allow me to just kind of paint some dabs in here and just add some texturing effects to this. And I do this a lot. Um, you we tend to use texture images a lot. We'll, you know, I know Pete and I both use this. Bring our images in and define or actually blend them using a blend mode or something like that. But another thing you can actually do is make a brush from a texture. Even if you take a small selection of it and do that rough selection, even with the um, Magic Wand tool, as he talked about a few episodes back, make a brush out of that selection. And then you can just go in here and modify the behaviors. I could go into the shape dynamics, for instance, and set the size jitter. And notice the preview at the bottom here as it changes. It's kind of giving you an idea of how the brush is going to behave once you start using it. And this is what we're talking about um, with tool presets. Because if you go in here and just um, and modify a bunch of different settings, and we'll do transfer so it responds to pin pressure as I paint and stuff like that. So if you go in here and you make all these modifications, when you go and select a different brush or a different brush tip, you're going to lose all that. Right. And you're going to have to go and reset all that again. So how many times have you created a brush with certain properties and you lost it and you're like, oh man, I wish I remember how I made that brush. That is what the tool preset's for. So if I've got all my properties and they look good, I'm actually going to dab a little bit just to kind of get my design effect going on here. So just, you're kind of, being, you're having more control over the texture. And of course, because it's on its own layer, you can try different things. You can try different blend modes, different even layer styles to try to give it some depth or something. Like depth, 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 depth. Kill it, kill it, man. But again, if I'm all done, then I'll simply go and say, I like this brush. I want to be able to use it in the future. Go to that tool preset menu and just choose new tool preset. It will go ahead and ask you, hey, do you want to include the color? Well, no, I don't, but maybe I do. So just give it a name like before and then go and click OK. Now that is saved and you can use it as it is anytime, and even modify it. If you wanted to tweak the settings just a little bit, go ahead and do that, but you're not having to go back and do it all over again. So. Now, here's the one caveat. I do try to label the tool presets mm. with a, a, a label that I can then figure out what it is, because unfortunately, <coughs> I do have a rack of brushed erodible tips, number one, mm. two, three, four, five, that I have to go in and figure out what it is. So that would be the one time that I do make sure to label when I'm doing tool presets. Very, very cool. All right, let's do this. Can we, let's take a quick break. Yep. We're gonna come right back. Pete's got some more stuff on brushes. We're gonna talk a little bit about Photoshop World and all the cool things that go with that. So stay with us. We'll be right here. Yep. Hi everyone, welcome back to Photoshop User TV. We are just a week away. This is our last episode before we're gonna be heading off to Atlanta for Photoshop World. It's gonna be on April 8th, and we hope to see you there. If you're registered, we can't wait. We are, couldn't be more excited about it. Pete's gonna be there, I'm gonna be there, everybody's gonna be there, well, mostly everybody. <laughs> be sure to check out photoshopworld.com and find out more information. If you can't make it to Atlanta, we're gonna be in a Vegas later this year. I don't know the specific dates yet, but be on the lookout for that. So, Pete, more brushes. More brushes. It's a brush episode. Let's continue on. Well, we had one of the watchers uh, in, in 
leaving the comments on the show asked about brushes and collecting brushes and said specifically, boy, I'm tripping over my words. Specifically, mm. what happens when you and Corey create your own brushes? How do you organize them? And mm. how do you know where to find them? Or do you just have to keep digging back through it? And uh, so here's the thing is I've created all these different collections of brushes that I've got here, like vintage mine, you know, that's, <laughs> that's a classic one right there. But I had all these brushes here and it was driving me crazy that I would have. Mine or mime? Mine. Oh. Yeah, I have mime brushes. So they come, <laughs> they're very quiet brushes. <laughs> they don't make much sound, but they do a lot of jazz hands. <laughs> but what it, I eventually decided was, <coughs> all right, all the brushes that come with, if we go back over to Photoshop, just like, oh, I'm giving you the pre preview there. We're going to kick back over to this. Uh, if you go over to your brushes, and now you can, you can choose all these different brushes uh, over here that are already loaded into Photoshop. So I could come in, and besides the ones I already have up, uh, I could come in and I could load up something like M brushes. Now, how many of you know what M brushes look like? I've been using Photoshop for quite some time, and I can't remember what M-brush... Do you know what M-brushes look like? I have no idea. So the only way to find out is to go, okay, do you want to replace all your brushes or add these to it? I'm going to go ahead and append, which means add it to the bottom of it, because I don't want to... I will lose all my other brushes if I hit OK. It will replace everything and just give me M-brushes. So I'm going to do append, and now it's going to be the last brushes at the bottom here. And so my M brushes are down here. Oh, that's exciting right there. I, I will probably use that probably never, maybe once or twice, but there are other brushes I would definitely want to use more than that. So even with the default brushes that you can choose from here, like your faux finish brushes and stuff like that, I'm not even going to add those. I kind of would have to guess what they were. were. And so I finally decided one day I'm going to spend some time and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to lock up Photoshop once again. Here's a little trick if Photoshop locks up. Go just hit your command tab and go to a different program and come back and usually that will jump start it and there you go. You're right back in there. That little tip alone may keep you from losing your sanity. And that's our show. And that's your show. <laughs> but what I did is I went through all of the brush presets for every brush that was given to me in Photoshop. So here's the default brushes. And I didn't just do the tips. I copied the tips. I did screen captures of the tips. But then I drew a squiggle of each one so you can see how they initially behave. Now, the, the nice thing is, is that I know I can also adjust these. Like, I could get in there and change the characteristics. But now I can look and say, yeah, I, I need a fuzzy brush so I can go to default and grab this this one right here, or I really need some faux finishes, or here's your dry media. I created a chart to see what the basic brushes are, and now when I create my own new brush collections, I can add to this chart, or I can create a secondary chart that's like my brushes, specialty brushes, and I've got a visual uh, reminder of what's going on there. Now, the whole reason why I want to do that is I can print this out. This one, I've got about, it's about 3,500 pixels, whatever. I can print it out and stick it on my wall, and so I've got a quick reference guide to it. Uh, and that's one way that I, I keep track of those. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to try to, when I build my collections, make sure I label them so that I know what's going on. And not necessarily the individual brushes themselves, but these collections, I will try to have them set up so that I kind of have a good idea of where to go to load up the brushes. It's not sexy, but these are things that are going to help your Photoshop work, work out a little bit better. And so what I decided to do with this chart, this is Photoshop. I did it in CS6, and then I tweaked it and updated it for CC for the most part. I think I've missed a couple brushes. You know, it, it gets a little crazy in there after a while. Uh, and so I may have missed a couple because I am pretty ADD. You know, if you're doing all these brushes, I might have missed one or two, but they're all there. If you would like a copy of this chart, you just simply need to go to PeteCollins.com and look at my blog, and you'll see I have the uh, Photoshop brush chart in there for you to download. So you can just go in there, feel free to steal it, print it out, put it up on your wall or whatever. But that's a great way to get uh, a good idea of what kind of brush you might want to go after if you need to choose a new brush. And, yep. 
I was going to say, no, the difference between me and Pete is that he actually had the patience to make that chart. <laughs> well, never, never would have happened with me. There, <laughs> there is a method to my madness. I was teaching a class on it. So, uh, uh, you know, I'm oh. a visual learner. I, I'm all about, I'm visual. I can't remember if I don't have it in mm. front of my eyes. So I did it as much for myself as anybody else. No, it's, no, it's a great visual aid for the brushes. And if you do have the time to make your own of your own custom brushes, I would certainly encourage it because it certainly is a great. Now you need to print that really big hanging in your office. <laughs> Okay, uh, we're gonna start to wrap things up. We've got another Peach Pit E Deal. These Peach, I almost say Peach Pit again. <laughs> peach Pit E Deal. Check out this great ebook deal from Peach Pit. Go to peachpit.com slash Kelby1. Check out the book, and if you're interested, go and enter the code Kelby1 and get a great discount on that ebook. Now, we also have another giveaway. Hey, hey contest and prizes. And, you know, we talked about this earlier, and we decided it would be a little too much for Corey to pimp his own book. And so I'm going to pimp Corey's book. If you haven't gotten the first edition, you need to go ahead and get that one and then win this one mm -hmm. because the two books are, are different, but they also are great to have together. This is a mm -hmm. phenomenal new book mm -hmm. just out not too long ago. Uh, you learn all this neat stuff that he's been showing you on the mm -hmm. show, but he also takes you step by step through it so you don't have to keep hitting the pause button and go, now what did Corey do here? Mm -hmm. What did he do there? Awesome book. Make sure that you go to kelby1.com slash contest. Make sure to pick Photoshop user TV from the drop down menu, add your name, email, et cetera, and leave a comment and say, I want Corey's down and dirty. Your tricks comment needs too. to say how badly you want it. You're going to need to fight for this one because it's a great book. Determined. But that's a way we're going to pick one of the winners from ran at random from the group that mm. answers. So you can't win if you don't leave a comment. And I will indeed sign it as well. So it will be a signed copy of the book. So good luck to you out there. I do believe that wraps it up. That's it. Another episode. Um, like I said before, we'll see you guys at Photoshop World. If you're going to be there next week, uh, we can't wait. We're super excited, so have fun, and we'll see you there. Until next time, here on Photoshop User, I'm Corey Barker and Mr. Pete Collins. Yep. <laughs> Take care. We'll see you guys Bye, later. Bye, guys. <laughs>